tell you what, that's fun. If you love good hockey, let alone when it's specific to your favorite team, you've got no reason to not love the way this team is going right now. Good morning to you. Good Friday morning from Washington. I'm Dayan Kovacevic of DK Pittsburgh Sports, and this is Daily Shot of Penguins. Comes your way bright and early every weekday if you're into football and or baseball. I also offer daily shots of Steelers and Pirates in the same place that you found this. Penguins 4, Capitals 1. You're going to have to take my word for it that the game was nowhere near that interesting. Up to and including when Alexander Ovechkin scored early in the third period to cut that lead to 3-1. The Penguins were in complete command of this event from the drop of the puck to the final horn. It might have been their tightest performance all season, and that's saying something considering what they just did Monday night in New York to the Rangers, the NHL's number one team, what they've done at different points of the season. To other teams in that bracket, the Avalanche, the Canucks, the Golden Knights, the Jets. You can run through that whole top 10 list up there and you'll find teams that the Penguins have done this to. But not like this. Not over all 200 by 85 of ice. Not when it comes down to really specific little details of the game. You know, what What I'd love to do with you right now, because press boxes, they're not the best for viewing sports. If they were, they'd be selling them to people who pay for them, <laughs> as it is. They do offer a different perspective on the game. You're looking down. It's kind of like old school sports video games, where everything was from directly overhead, like you're flying in a drone. And when I saw things happen for the Penguins, Before they happened, that's how it feels playing a video game to have that joystick in your hand and to control everyone who's on your team on your video game because your center knows what the left winger is going to do because you're the same person. There was so much of that happening. Zone entries, zone exits, really smooth breakouts, support all over the rink. When one penguin had the puck, there were two others nearby, either as safety valves or in case it got poked away or something else went wrong. Number of odd man breaks for the Capitals in this game, zero. That had been their primary emphasis before this one, I was told. The defensive work, and I'm not just talking about the defensemen. I'm not just talking about uh, the new kids. You know, Jack St. Ivany and Ryan Shea formed a really solid pair again for this team. Something that had been lacking all season long. Alex Nedeljkovic, 30 saves on 31 shots. And so smooth and so calm. Kept covering every puck. I actually joked with him afterward that, well, here, just listen. Ned, did you set out to cover everything the way you did? You must have had 100 covers in this game. Uh, I think that's just how the, the way the game played out. There was a lot of bouncing pucks, a lot of weird plays where they were either trying to put it on that or put it down low and yeah, yeah. got a stick. Like There was one that went off, I think, Carl's head and like bounced in yeah. front of me and then into my, my gut. So like a lot of weird plays like that. This, I mean, I try to... You, you try to get a feel for the game and the flow of the game and how things are going. And, um, you know, I thought we kind of did, in the third there just needed to settle down a little bit. We needed to kind of get our breath and and just, you know, they were, they were coming hard. They were coming hard in the third. They had a really big push. There was, there was like, no whistles to start that period. So um, after that, whenever I could, just trying to stop the puck, give the guys a breather and then try to get us to, to calm down a bit. Just, again, another one of those details. He felt the need to slow the game down. When Ovechkin scored, it was 
Ned, who went back to the bench and took a little bit of extra time, and then there was a little bit of a pause in coming back. It was just to get everybody to just settle down a little bit. And I don't even know if he means his teammates as much as the packed arena. Everybody just had a, had a little bit more time to chill than they might have wanted. And speaking of joking, this was my conversation with Eric Carlson after the game in a really fun locker room. And just to preface this a little bit, as he's answering my question about defensive play and I share with him what I'll share with you right now, which is that he was outstanding and he's been that for a while now. Michael Bunting passes by, and Bunting, you saw, didn't score the world's greatest goal. It was just like a random slap shot from 1985 that happened to beat Charlie Lindgren. So anyway, when you hear Carlson getting distracted, it's because Bunting's walking by. Here it goes. Where this, all this commitment to defending has come from, because you're all doing it, and you've been outstanding. Yeah, I mean, I think we've been, that's been one of our strengths, I think, all year. Is, when you've is, done it. Yeah, <laughs> it's the, I think we had, a, obviously, a period there where we didn't play very good hockey. Uh, you know, obviously, our defense game, you know, was part of that. Mm-hmm. But I think, for the most part, I think we've been a fairly consistent, you know, defensive, structured, good team. Uh, and, you know, we're getting some, some easy goals now too which helps you know control games and, and that was a perfect example today and then we got easy, easy goal. yeah yeah Bunt's, <laughs> Bunt's a little bit too predictable on his on his uh, breakaways but you know when he's coming down that wall when he raises that stick he has no clue where it's going eh? neither do you That's the, just like in the soccer ring no clue left handed Gila flower yeah. flying down the no, right I just there. I just think like we know uh, you know uh, what we are kind of and, and we have to play good defensively and I think it, especially in our D zone we're really good I think, you know, neutral zone, I think it's, it's hit or miss sometimes. Uh, but once we get in our D zone, I think we're very, very uh, predictable to each other. They're fun. This is fun. This is what's been missing for the first six months of the season. But at least it came along at the very end. We'll see where it goes from here. When we come back, J1Q. J1Q comes from Ryan, and it's on the subject that you would hope it'd be on after that game that was played here last night. Ryan asks, DK, how can the Penguins not re-sign Alex Nedeljkovic? It's very clear that the players trust him so much more than they do with Tristan Jari. Ryan, I, I happen to share that viewpoint. My vote doesn't necessarily count on that any more than yours would or anybody who's on the outside. And I say that because I've never heard anything of the kind from any of the players and don't expect to. That would run completely counter to the hockey culture. You never betray a goaltender, whether it's your starter, your backup, your third string or whatever. You just don't do it. So don't expect to hear about anything of the kind. But, you know, we're watching the games. We're seeing what we're seeing. And this team performs differently in front of Nedeljkovic. And I don't think that's an accident after a lifetime around this beautiful game. Now, as I say that, I want to cringe just a little bit at doing so because usually that kind of comment is made in association with a goaltender who isn't very good and almost has to draw praise in some other form. It's a little bit similar. If you go back to the early parts of this season and even back into training camp, when Mike Sullivan would be asked about Nadelkovic, he would always say, oh, he works so hard. He tries so hard. He's a battler, which made, here again, it made him sound like a bad goaltender. Okay, well, here's the truth right now. Nadelkovic's record is 15-6-6 and in 27 starts. Jari's record is 19-24-5. and So Jari's lost 10 more games than he's won. 
Nedeljkovic's goals against average is 2.78 to Jari's 2.9. Nedeljkovic's save percentage is 908 to 903. So this isn't just about, gee, we all love Ned, and they all love Ned. I think it's much more fair, speaking only for myself, you can feel however you choose, to say, hey, this guy's been pretty good at his job. I can't say enough for what he did last night that, that I referenced in the opening segment about the covering the puck. Matt Murray used to do that back when he was still Matt Murray. Uh, Muzz would cover everything because he wanted the game to move at his pace, not anybody else's. And he didn't care if it was game seven of a playoff series or Game seven of the regular season, everything had to go the way he wanted. I really, really liked seeing that in Ned. But I'm going to tell you something else here, and I'm going to share this with you. It's a little bit lengthy, but I hope you give every syllable of it a listen to understand who and what Alex Nedeljkovic is to this team. This is from Ned himself after the game when he was asked, What's the single most important thing that's happened in front of him during this recent 6 and one search? Listen to this. The guys in front Play of this me, way. the yeah. guys in front of me have been, they, yeah. this whole trip have been incredible. Um, you, you know, that was a tough back-to-back in, in New York and New Jersey. Yeah. yeah, we beat one of the best teams, like top three team in the league in, in New York in their barn. Then we got to get on the bus, go to the, go to a new hotel, Go play in New Jersey, a team that we're fighting for for points with. Um, that's got a lot of firepower up front, got a lot of speed. They play fast, and we found a way to win in that game. We came back in the third period uh, tonight. Tonight, same thing. Like another team we're fighting with, we're chasing. Um, a lot of firepower, obviously, and and we just played an unbelievable game. I think um, maybe. Maybe the first 10 minutes we were, you know, we were trying to find our legs a bit. But after that, we, we took it to them. And second period, we were all over them. We didn't give them a sniff. Um, and then in the third period, you know, they had, you, other than the power play, they didn't really get much. They didn't get much other than that five on three. And, um, you know, it, it seemed, they might have had a lot of possession, but they didn't really get anything out of it. So I think we did a great, an unbelievable job shutting it down. All four lines, all six defensemen, everybody's played it huge roles um, this this whole trip, and we, and we needed it. And that, Ryan, is my answer in turn to your question. You do not let this goaltender get away. I appreciate the question. I appreciate everyone listening to Daily Shot of Penguins and somehow sticking through it to the point where there's six games left and they're two points out. It's unbelievable. Unbelievable. Let's do it again Monday, everybody.